Yeah. All right. Are you doing book lists? No, this is continuing on from yesterday. Hopefully yep. With a bunch of books. Yep. But we're going to add to it, instead of just doing this, we're going to add to it um, users, and each user is going to have their own counter. So first, uh, I think let's put together some views. So let's um, have sort of a, well first let's make this counter view here into rather than like you have clicked the button you know x times let's make something I think that makes a little more sense here for what we want to do so we're going to call this increment and put a plus in it and we're going to have another button called surprise and put a minus in it and then in the middle we're going to have the number and then in our container we called this uh, increment right and then we also need decrement and we need a decrement action this should be a comma um, save that but let's look in our actions we never made a decrement action so let's export decrement decrement. So to review, let's go look at our reducer. Our reducer already had that in it, right? Increment and decrement. We just didn't use it yet. So we have our functions that just return. These are our action creators. So back over here and here we're going to need to pull in that other action creator too. Cool. We can go up. We can go down. Hey. Probably shouldn't be able to go past zero, though. Or maybe not. I don't know. What are the rules for this game? I don't know. Let's make this general purpose. Maybe you can have a negative score in the game. It's up to the user to decide if the input's valid or not. We're going to leave it at that. Um, so. Yeah. I'm just I'm having a bit of trouble with like the organization of the files inside okay. of the source. Can you kind you of walk through them all? Yeah, do you mind? I don't mind at all. Cool. So let's close up all this. So let's let's start at the index. So in the index, you know, we load in React and React DOM. We load in our app component. I like to keep this below everything else, so we'll do that. Um, and we take and we render our app into the page. So the app component, really, that's the real entry point to our app, right? Component slash app. So let's go look at that. Here it is. So it imports some things from Redux and React Redux. It imports the reducer from the reducers folder and it imports our counter component from the counter container here. We create a store using the function that we got from Redux and we pass it the reducer. So the reducer, remember, is the function that takes a state and an action and gives you what the next state is going to be. So we give that function to the store and say I'm going to create a store, this is the reducer for that store. This is the little boilerplate code to make our dev tools work. And then in order to make the store available to the whole app, we wrap the app in a provider component. So this is just some boilerplate here that you got to do always. Um, and then we render our counter component, right? And that's that's really it for what happens here in the app. So is that is the provider providing <coughs> access to 
everything within every file? Uh, everything that's going to get rendered from here down, if you, when you, we go look at this container component, this connect function, this connect function is, you see it's also provided by React Redux. React Redux also provided the provider. So this provider makes the store available to this connect function so that we use this connect function to connect a component to the store. And you, you need the, the provider needs to exist for that connect function to work. Because like in the, in the homework, like we, were, we had data, like a file of data. So yep. Just trying to write, right? Yep. Um, and that probably came in in the reducer as the initial state. If you go look in the reducers there, that's where that data file gets loaded. Is in the initial state. Without being I guess, a file, right? It does in the reducer. It gets imported in there if you look. Um, so let's look at our reducer. So this uses combined reducers. Combined reducers is a way, like let's say our state was going to look like this, right? We had counter and our counter, counter, counter is zero. But let's say we had something else, right? Like to do's. Now, if I just write one reducer function, it would have to switch on all the different actions that manipulate these different parts. But as our app gets bigger, we might have a lot of different things in our state. So what Redux provides us is this function where we can break this part and this part into separate reducers. So what I did was I created a reducer that just handles this part of the state, just this part I've highlighted here, and I import it in from that from that file, and then I use the, the nice you know the ES 2015 syntax here to say that counter is counter, right? By just putting it like that. So that handles this part. So if I also had another reducer that handled just that to dos array. I could import it as to-dos here and then just put to-dos and it would combine them together into one reducer for me. So that's what this combined, the purpose of combined reducers is, is so that you could break your, because really you only get one reducer function and it should handle any changes to your state for anything in your app. There's only one store, there's only one reducer function. For a big app, you would not want to write one 300 line long function that handled everything, right? So that's combined reducers once you break it up, basically. Um, so here's the, the reducer for the counter, right? That piece of the state is just a number. So here's where we provide the initial state. This could be a big object, too, that you pulled in from a data file, which if you look in the, in the, the, the activity that you're, you're asking about, that's exactly what they did. So this takes the existing state and it takes an action and it says switch on the action type in case it's this then here's the new state in case it's this then here's the new state otherwise I don't handle that action so here was the existing state no, I'm not going to change it all right so that's what happens in here in the reducer yeah it like once, you, like if you if you look at each piece individually, each individual piece is meant to be very simple, and then it's just kind of connecting the dots because kind of where like the head scratching starts, I think. Um, so that's the the job of the reducers, and if we remember here in the app, that's what we pull in here and we pass it to our store, and then that's it. We'll never touch the reducer again directly ourselves, right? What we're going to do is dispatch actions. Right, and then the store will mat will when it calls for every action we dispatch, it'll call the reducer function with the existing state, and and then whatever gets returned from the reducer, that's the next state, and so then when the next action happens, that happens over and over again. So every action just gets applied to the reducer function with the state to get the what the next state's going to be. So our, our whole app state is basically just one big object 
and we, we can change pieces of it with actions. So how do we get those actions, right? So we can list them out. These are our functions that just say this is the this is the action increment or decrement. It's just a plain object, right? If you have more, like like maybe if we were going to delete something, we would need to know what it is we're deleting. So that would be part of this, right? Like you would have a payload, and you could say like I'm going to delete one. I'm going to delete the I'm going to maybe maybe I want to decrement by an amount, not just one. Maybe I'm going to decrement by, uh, you know, like I could say the amount. The default is one, but if you gave me something else, like if I, you called this function and gave it two, then I would decrement by two. Maybe we could do that, right? So you can you can put other stuff in this object, but the very minimum you need a type. Is that type like whatever you want it to be? Mm -hmm. You write you you write this yourself, whatever you want it to be. It's the name of the action. Usually you just you know, write it in all, the, the convention seems to be write it in all uppercase, but it, it could really be anything. Because um, this is the thing that we're going to switch on um, in our reducer, right? The action type, and we're going to switch and see if it's that. So, why do you need that step there? Which step? This one right here. It's you don't, there. you don't. You could, see this, when we call this function, it just returns this object. You could, in your dispatch down here, I could just dispatch that. That would be fine. This would totally do that. This right here, this map dispatch to props, this makes, when we connect it, it makes something called, a function called decrement, this function right here, it makes it available to my, to my component so that I can dispatch this to the store. And this connect function right here is what connects these to my actual store. Notice I'm not talking about my store here because my store is a variable that's over in that app.js. But because I gave it to the provider, I can use this connect function to connect them back together in other components. And I think that's really the hardest part to kind of wrap your head around with Redux is, is this little bit right here. So uh, what all needs to be connected? What all needs to be connected? Yeah. So, um, whatever piece of state that you want to expose to that component as a property, you list them here in the map state to props. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take my counter and make it available to this component. So I'm gonna say this, so counter is the state.counter, right? I also had two actions that I wanna make available to this component. So I'm gonna call them decrement and increment. And then I'm gonna, those are just gonna be a function that'll dispatch that action right here. Um, so, a lot of times, though, your actions might have, like, well, it has this type, but then it also maybe um, has three or four other pieces of payload information, and I don't want to have to remember necessarily how exactly that's structured. I just want a function that I can call to get that action. And so the convention is to do these action creators, but you don't need them to do Redux. Um, but it's it's sort of it's idiomatic redux, which is like the the way everyone does it, right? The way the authors intended for it to be done, and the way everyone does it. But it's not required for it to work. The main part is this dispatch right here. This is what dispatches an action, so that when our reducer gets called with the state and that action, we never we never call this reducer ourselves, right? It gets called when we dispatch an action. Well, you'll see when we start to build other components, not every component is going to use every action or every piece of state. You're, an individual component might only use one piece of state and one of the actions or two of the actions. So I'm going to take those actions and those pieces of state and I'm going to map them props for that component using the connect function. And so this component now is very dumb. All it's going to get is increment... and decrement as functions. And it doesn't care about uh, 
It doesn't care about anything else, right? It doesn't care where those functions came from. It doesn't care where this, it, like these props, it just doesn't care about where those props came from. As far as it's concerned, um, when you click on this button, I'll call that function. When you click on this button, I'll call that function. And I'm, I don't care. So, and then this, this is the one that just glues that component that doesn't care about anything. We call them presentational components. They used to be called dumb components because they don't care about anything. Um, we, we use this component here because even though it doesn't look like it, we are, we're actually defining another component. We're defining a component that's magically connected to our store. This is the function that creates it by mapping these pieces of state and these actions to be available to it. You could just do this in the bottom of that other file. So you don't, I mean, but it, but it still would put a container around it. And you'd see it, it would look the same in the, read, in the React tree. When you go inspect all your elements, it would look the same. The common convention seems to be to make, a, make it its own file. Because if, if you're doing testing, you can test this component to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do, given those props and stuff. You can test it separately from, and not this component. This component has no idea about Redux or anything. It doesn't care. So you could you could test this in isolation, and that's the whole kind of the, the point of things, is to be able to have things work in isolation. Oh, it would be for each presentational component. It would have its own container, if if it was connected. Not all presentational components are going to be connected. Is that because you only need to export one thing? Um, yeah, I mean, you can export multiple things from a file, but usually with components, the only thing you export is the one component. Yeah, export default. Yeah, you can't export multiple defaults. You can export without default, and you, it'll. And that's where, when you import, you'll use the curly braces to import them by name. Um, cool. Does that help a little bit? OK. So now what we want to do is have a form here with a button where we can type in a name, press Enter, and we can add users. So I'm just going to, before we worry about giving each user a uh, increment and decrement score, we're going to just be able to add users and remove users. We're going to get there. So I'll leave this counter here. And what I'm going to do is make a um, new file here. I will call it userListView.js. That component user list view. Okay. So what we're going to do in here is just say um, let's make also let's make this a functional component. User list view. It's not going to have any state or anything, right? It's going to wrap. You're going to have more stuff in here. Okay. So this is going to look like it's going to be an unordered list, maybe. Um, actually, let's not even bother with that. Let's just make divs. That's fine. Div with like a user item. And have a little h2 with their name, so maybe Jason, and then a button with an X on it to, to delete them, and then another one here, like Gavin. Yeah, there we go. So let's go here to our app. 
let's import the user list from dot slash user list. I'm going to call it user list view here for the moment. There it is. Cool beans. <laughs> Let me go back in here and style to the fast. And uh, user item display flat. Womp womp. Look at those ugly buttons. Ooh. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. I can handle that. Cool user list, right? Looking beautiful. I love it. I'm happy with it for now. It's fine. Um, so, let's add to our reducers. I should have called them users. I call it people. Sorry, I'm going to rename this real fast. People. People. Shouldn't have hit escape. People. People. There and then the app. And then the CSS. Cool. That's easy. Okay. So now what I'm going to do in my reducers is we're going to add a reducer for people, right? The file. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the reducer because all we're going to do for now is just return the state. Right? And the state is going to be an empty array of people. Actually, let's go ahead and populate it for now, right? Um, so initial state. So we say const initial state then is an array. And let's say name is Jason. Name Gavin, name Mark, name Angel. Okay, whatever. Um, thank you, pretty. Um, so there's my initial state for, for that. Okay, thank you. Um, so over in here, I'm going to import. 
people from dot slash people. And I'm going to add them to this list. So if we go and we look in Redux at our state, the counter is zero, and our people is this array of objects that have these names. Like, it's there for us, right? So let's, let's make a component. Well, first here, let's do this. Let's say const person view is an object that returns this. And let's just put name, right? So this will then be right. It would be we have the props that come in here, right? So we'll have a props for people. So this will be people dot map a person into a person view and we will spread out the person's properties onto this so that should take their name and make it available there. Then we need this I I I Expected use of oh, name. So it's undefined, right? Because because we haven't provided any people to this component to map over yet. So let's make a container component for it. Well, actually, let's just prove that it works first. So if we go to here to Apple, we provide the people list. an array. It's empty, right? If I give it an object and I say name Jason, there's Jason, right? So this people list component, right? This is our people list view that we made. It's, it's pretty dumb at this point. All it does is it, it takes an array of objects that have a, a name key and it, it prints them out. So let's use the Redux connect function to connect this component to our store so that our store drives it. So we're going to take that back. We're going to change this to container. People list container.js. And I'm going to open this one and keep it on the bottom so we can kind of refer to it as we go. Let's give ourselves some room to see. Copy past to that line. Import people view, or sorry, people list view from people list view. And then we know at the end we're going to export default connect that state to props, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll make it exist in a minute. And we're not we don't have any actions yet, so I'm just gonna leave the second argument empty. And then we're, it's the people list view that we're mapping to, right? People list view. So let's define map state to props. State to props. It's a function that takes the state as an argument. Right? Let's just return the props now. There's people. Let's hard code JSON again. Let's see what happens. Map state to props. Map state to props. Not defined. Oh, const. There's Jason, right? We could take this, we could add a second one. 
What's that our friend Fooberry? It's Fooberry. Fooberry. <laughs> so there's Fo there's Fooberry, right? So Jason and Fooberry are hanging out here. Really, it was the state that had a people array on it, right? So there they are, right? Because those were, if we look at our state, down here in this tool, they had a people, and there's the, there they are. So this is great, right? We've, we've connected our store to this. Now we need to be able to take actions on it, right? So our people list view, here's the, here's the list, right? People list. Um, let's say uh, we're going to put a form at the bottom of the list. I don't like putting it in here, right in this. Um, let's just put our main tag in. I don't care. So yeah, we can only return one, one element, right? So here's our form. Let me make a little label for our form here. New person. Have an input tag. Placeholder is name. And a button. Button type is submit. Cool. So here's a form here at the bottom where we can add a new person, right? I don't like it all the way shoved at the edge of the bottom of the screen. Let's let's give our main Alright, fine. We're gonna make this an unordered list. We're going to make these list items. This is where I get really like picky about these things and I kind of obsess over them. Naming things is hard. That's really the list. Just call this people list. I can just call this people list. This doesn't need a class name. Okay. This really doesn't need one either. So when we go to our styles, which we just lost. We have the people list, right? That's what we called the whole thing. Um, but really these were the styles for the that's the UL. This was a people list apply. We got those styles. Uh, so this is going to need padding left zero and list style none. Boosh. And then on the people list itself, let's add a margin 1m all the way around. A little bit of space on the bottom. Uh, the carrot says only if it's the immediate child. This could be any descendant. Yeah. In this case, I don't have to worry about differentiating between them, so I can just leave that. In some case, you may say, like, there may be other divs deeper down. I don't want to style all the divs. I just want to style the ones that are immediately in this selector. Cool. So I'm I'm happy with how this looks for now. Okay, and how it's organized. Let's close up our files. So our people list view needs to have something happen on submit, right? So on submit, we're just gonna call. Uh, oh, is this gonna work as a functional component here? 
I don't have to stop that. I don't think this can be a... I think it can be, but I don't feel like figuring it out right now. So, class, people view, extends. And I, I didn't import React. I didn't import component up here in parentheses. So I'm going to show you all how different way to do that. You just say component on React like that. Place, render, boom. Move this here, return. Uh, I will need to, uh, I'm exporting it here. Oh, on submit. I never put anything here. This dot submit. This will need to be this dot props dot people. Okay, cool. So now we need our submit handler. What? <laughs> what? Not, not what I meant to type. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, let's give this a ref name. So I'm going to show you how to do a non-controlled input. So for the submit, let's just console.log the name that was in there, right? This is the event. Event uh, event default. We're going to console.log this dot refs dot name dot value. And instead of like having state drive this, all we all we can just read the value out of it. See, there it is there. And then when I'm done, I can clear it out. So let's actually say we want to do is this dot props dot add person and their name is this right so this this doesn't exist yet this dot props dot add person right so if we look at our it's going to not a function right so we need to go over here. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong container. People container. And we need to uh, map dispatch to dispatch. Dis, dispatch to props. This is takes dispatch. Let me I'm gonna cheat and look at the other one too. So Looks correct. So I called it add user, right? So that's a function. Oh, I did call it add person, thank you. So let's just console.log the name, right? Does this work? Did we, if we pass this here like that, let's return a plain object instead. Oh, I have to. Uh, turn that. There we go. So if we type something in, press enter, it just logs it, right? This is it logging it right here. So what we want to actually do is dispatch an action creator, right? So that we can do something with our store. So we go say, let's add to actions, const. Export const add person. It's going to be a function that takes a name. And what it's going to do is return a plain object that has a type add user. And then we can add any other properties to this we want, right? Like the name, the name of the user that we're going to add. Since we're using ES2015, we can just abbreviate that as this name. So this is just going to return. That's all it's going to do is return that. So in here, we'll 
import add user from actions. And what we'll do here is dispatch add user with the name. I think I did this correctly. Uh, sorry, this I keep saying add people, it's add person. There we go. Let me compare it to this. Yeah, okay. So before, this one didn't take an argument, but imagine we wanted to decrement by a number, right? We could, we could pass an argument through like that. And so when we called this function in our component, we could pass in a number. That's what we're doing with name here. Right? It takes a name, and we're just going to pass the name through. So nothing should change in our store yet because we haven't added the reducer that actually modifies the state. But what we should see when I hit enter here is an action get dispatched, add user, and it should have the payload with the name on it. So let's say foobarry. There's add user, and if we look at the action, it had the name on it. But it didn't modify the state at all. If we look at the diffs, the states were equal because our reducer is not handling that anywhere, right? So let's go look at our reducer that we added for people. Let's just console.log actions here. Let's see what happens, right? Let's console.log the action. So if we increment or decrement, Right, that still works as before. And check that out. It incremented when I pressed it, so if I decrement. So this, this reducer is getting all the actions. Every reducer we have is going because remember, this people reducer and that counter reducer, they get combined into one reducer. So there's really only one reducer. Even though logically we've broken it up into two files, it really ends up only being one. So every action is going to get kind of, this is like a pipeline. Every action is going to run through this pipeline, and we can choose whether or not to act on it in here. And that's why we do the switch statements. So I'm going to write a switch. I'm going to switch on the action type. I'm going to say in case it's add user, I'm going to say, also log, hey, I care about this action and then return the user and the default thing that I'm going to do oh sorry not user keep doing this add I'm, I'm going to go back and fix it in my mind I'm like users 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 I they're not users in this app they're people because these aren't users of the app I'm just listing people and so ah, this should be here state. That, the switch and the case is just like an if else statement. Yep. The switch, a switch is basically if action type is equal to add person, else if action type is equal to this, else if action type is equal to, instead of writing if, else if, if, else if, if else if, we have a switch statement. It gets called anytime an action is dispatched. Um, the container binds binds the dispatchers to the component, but it just gets called by Redux anytime an action is dispatched. Mm -hmm. So the action when we click, because we bound that event to call that prop that we connected to the store as a dispatcher. It kind of ch -ch 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 up the line. So we're just going to log that there. Um, and I'm going to go back to my actions and I am going to call this add person. 
So let's look at our Redux. So if we click here, like this works, but we have no console messages. But if we do this, it logged that message because in that reducer, we were kind of like listening to the stream of actions and we were doing nothing other than just passing the state back along if, unless it was add person, in which case we're like, hey, wait, I do, I care about that. So in this case, the state, right, is this array of names or of objects with, the, with names. So what we're going to do is we're going to return an array. We're going to take all of the ones that were there before and spread them out. And then we're going to say name is action.name, because that's the, the name here, right? We're going to add that to the list. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to say, hey, Fooberry, you want to be on my team? Hell yeah, I do. And there's Fooberry. Um, so now now this add, add person, we're done with it. It's, it's done. Um, when you got a really big app, it ends up being like that easy to add. Like you'd be surprised like how hard this stuff gets in a big app with the regular state stuff. And this might have seemed a little bit tedious to add such a tiny thing now, but in a really big app, that's all you have to do to like sometimes implement really major features. It's just like add this little thing to the reducer, add this little action creator. Oh shit, I can call this from anywhere in my code now by just connecting it to the using the map state to props or map, map dispatch to props for actions or for, for state. So now what we want to do is be able to remove a user, right? I think so. So let's, let's make our initial state go back to being an empty object, an empty array. So, so we have no users. Jason, Gavin, Mark. So let's start with actions. Let me think here. Use index. That's fine. I'm just going to use indexes. Just the like. This is zero. This is one. This is two. We're just going to go with that for removing them for now. Um, so here, to remove a person, I'm going to copy paste that and say remove. Remove a person. We want their index, right? And I'm just going to pass index along here. That's it. I just need to. I just need to know what position in the list they're at to be able to remove them. So in our container, let's also do remove person. Actually, this is a good time to commit. I'm going to roll back here. Uh, actions. Let's take this out because we're not copy that. Okay. Come over here. Nope, not there. Come over. GG. Lazy commit. Start that thing. Okay. So, there's our action creator back back in place. I'm going to close up all these files. We're going to go to the people list container and say remove person. We're going to remove a person. It was their index, right, is the thing that we're going to call pass to that. We're just going to say dispatch remove the person at that index. Okay, that's done. So we're done in this file. We are going to go to the people reducer. Actually, we'll add that. and yeah, we'll do it now. So for the moment, I'm just going to write remove person. And I'm going to console.log need to remove person with index 
action.index. And then for now, I'm just going to return the state. We're not going to modify it yet. I just want to get it all wired up. And then in here, when you click X, remove X, remove person, unclick. Person. So here, uh, person view, we need to pass remove person. So this, remember, has this dot props dot remove person. Let me think how to do this. Uh, We need to pass. We need to make a. Basically, we need it to be a function like this. This dot props dot remove person. But with i. Right. So this is a new function that we're creating that calls the one that we mapped in our connected component, in our container component. It has i bound to it already. So up here. The thing that clicks this remove person already this is already a function that already knows which I to call because that's we made a new function here to pass to that so that should log us I need to remove person with zero I need to remove a person with one so we're not changing the state yet but it's all wired up correctly. It's kind of just to reformatting on me anyway. Um, so let's look at our reducer. So how do we pull something out of here? Does anyone have any any guesses? Like how do you remove an element from an array? Splice. Splice. Splice would work, except the state has to be immutable. We can't. We can't mutate this state that's coming in. We could filter. Yep. Slice. We're going to use slice. Right? So the way this works is what we want to return is the state we're going to slice from zero up until the action.index. So we're going to spread out all the things that came before this element and then we're going to spread out all the things that come after this element. And if you leave off the last argument it goes to the end of the array. So this is everything that came after the index and this is everything up until the index and we just use spread to spread them out together so we get a new array that has everything from before and everything from after, but not the one that we want to remove. That's how that works. So if we say Gavin, Jason, and Fooberry, and I'm like, wait a second, Fooberry doesn't work here. Bingo. Right? I can delete Gavin, and now I can delete Jason. And we can get rid of our message there. So let's look at everything we had to do to add that feature. Uh, so we touched four files. In the actions, we created this action, or this, I should say we created this action creator, which is what they, they call these. In the container, we added remove person here to the import, and then we added them to the map right here. This line changed because we added a comma there. So we changed two lines of code here. In this file, we added the event here, and we passed this prop along 
here. And here we specified what that prop was. It's a function that calls this. This is this remove person right here is the same one that we, we mapped to it here. It's a function that takes an index. So here's a function taking the index. The reason we had to map it in this extra function here is so that I could pass this along to here because this component doesn't know what its index is because it's, it's too dumb. So we just give it a function that already a new function each for each one. There's other ways to do that, but this one works fine. And then for the reducer, we just added these two lines. So total lines of code changed really are two. Uh, we added three lines here, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this. So about 12 lines of code-ish. We added a pretty major kind of feature to that with just a couple things. The nice thing is, is no matter how complex your app gets, that's it. That's all you got to do to add new new features. Yeah. Um. Uh, for, you, for, for this right here, I I could have like connected this component to the store too. It would it would have gotten messy. Yeah. Like, I could, if I had written this list item directly in here instead of extracting it to a person view component, I wouldn't have needed to do that. Yeah, the head that was connected and it would have taken its, its ID as a prop from here and had to have done it. It would have been, yeah, like, I'd have had to write a lot more code. Yeah. Um, Cool. So uh, let's uh, quick update. All right. So that's pushed up to get that down. Um, now we can add people and we can remove them. Let's give them each their own counter. You know, right. So at this point. We're not really going to have this separate counter thing anymore. The increment, decrement actions are going to be part of the people reducer. So I'm going to take these two case statements. I'm going to move them to people here. And let's just think about these first, right? They're going to need to take the index as well. They're going to do the same thing as this, except rather than removing them, they're going to replace that user with, with something, right, in the array. So it's going to have to return the array with everything that came before it, everything that came after it, but there's going to be an object here, right? Um, so what we're going to do is... The person is the state dot uh, sorry state at action dot index. So that's the one. The person. So let's get this. Let's get the the name and the count counter. So then here it's just the name and Counter is counter plus one. Right in it. Well, well, comma. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let me go uh, to my prettier packages. Settings. I think I have it set to like 120. I'm going to put it to 80, the default. There we go. Cool. I like that better. Okay. So there's our increment. 
So we're doing the same thing that we were doing in remove, except we're replacing the one that was at that position with the name that they had before, and we're changing the, their counter. So let's do the same thing for decrement, except minus one for the counter. And what did I forget here? Oh, really? I, I have not done that yet. Um, it's it's that this is a constant and I already declared it. So apparently these don't have scope of their own. Wow. Um, Um, oh, you know what? I totally could because oh, look we'll action. That might not work because it's going to get called for every action. The problem here, in case you're all wondering, is that this doesn't create a unique scope. So this constant, I can't declare another constant with the same name right below it, because this is all in the same scope. I think maybe what I can do is make an iffy. So if you have a function, then you immediately invoke the function, and I return that then I can just put this in there. Yeah, that should work. So we have an arrow function. We execute it. We put that in there. And then we also return that. Woo! X. I bet if I go look at uh, some other people's Redux code, they do exactly that. Because I, I can't think of a better way to get out of this problem in there. Um, so uh, that that should work as a as a thing for those. Let's make our actions here also take an index now. And pass them on through. Okay. Our counter component now. Um, needs to. Pass the index through. So now we're not going to have one counter component, right, out there. Each person is going to have a counter 
in a person view. Right there. Import counter from dot slash Yeah. I guess it'll be Is this container's not going to have this anymore? And I'm wondering if we should move these to the other container. Start our server back up. We're not even. Or are we? Yeah, we're still running it's over here. I think we're going to need to pass the index for like which user this is, the, count, the counter for the person here. Um, feel like feel like we're going to need to pass this here. So, sorry, this person. So we could pass the index here as I. that then we can just pass this along like that and then increment decrement so then this would be Counter container. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
we don't know what the index is. Try something here. Okay. I'm blown up. Look at Redux, what's happening? That looks correct, right? It's apparently the props that you pass to this component. Is it um, here? Index. We pass that prop to it in the container. It's available as the second argument here, so we can we can bind that up like that. Why isn't that working? Let's look at our reducer. I'm doing a little sanity checking, kind of see what what's going on. Undefined. Oh, so when we add someone, we need their counter to be zero. Because what I was doing was I was trying to plus one to undefined. Let's see though if that leaves. Made sense for a second. <laughs> it did, it did. Okay. Oh. Oh, it's working. I'm just not showing the right thing in the view, I bet. So if we look, yeah, look, there's the diff. There's what changed. When I go down, there it is going down. So, yeah, so, oh, so in here, oh, right, so it's not state.counter, it's this also is going to get the props, oops, which have the index, so I say state index counter. Right? And then, oh, props.index. Bomb bomb. Let's try. Let's see what they are here. people 
at props.index. You're like, subtle, soft laugh, because I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to walk back through it. I have no idea. What I just figured that all that out. There's, this is something I've not done before. Um, and so I'm going to walk back through sort of what I was, what I was thinking. Probably, if I had been thinking out loud more, I probably would have just confused you all more than anything else. Um, so first, let's get rid of that console.log message is in the reducer. Okay. We need this no longer. Let's change our layout here a little bit real fast too. Uh, F.js um, The whole point of redux is to uh, personalize your functions and features. Like yeah. your own components. So you yeah. control the components of your application. Yep. Let's just get rid of the logo here. Let's get the logo. We don't need this. I know this is probably a logo question. Um, but like, how many features would your app need for redux? Like, like how big is something that's big? Oh, oops. Oh, oops, my bad. One sec. Um, sorry. Uh, probably, like, it depends. It really depends. Yeah. So there's not really a hard number of features. It's probably just at the point where you start um, realizing that it's hard to manage things. Yeah. Yeah. So here's our cool scorecard app. We can add people, and we can increment their scores, and we can take them from our list. Um, so, let's. This is the main thing that really that that got weird, right? If if I had decided to make the counter not be a smart container, I could have done what I did here, which was in the. Um, oh, you know what? And I don't need. I don't need these. I never used those. Right. right, okay, I never used those. Okay. So for the person view, I took the the remove person action that I had bound in my container and I passed it to the person view. And in person view, the reason I had had those other two there is because I was just gonna pass those along the same way and then pass them to counter again. Instead, what I did was I just passed the index to counter as a prop. I said, you're a, you're a counter component, uh, and this is the this is the user user that you that you're a counter component. I just passed that piece of information. So that component itself is now mapped to the Redux store, right? So each of these functions that we that we use, this map state to props. Before, we were only mapping the state to the props and the dispatch to props based on just the state itself and, and the dispatch itself. But it gets a second argument. It gets any props that this component, when it's rendered, is given. And we can use those to do things. So like, let's say it's a component that's routed, and you're at you know, blog post slash four, and you want to get in your you know things you want to go get the blog post that has that idea and it needs to come from the URL. This is the part where you look into the state 
and use your props.match.params ID to find the one in the state that has that ID, and then that's the one that you would match to this prop. And this is where you do that work. So, so you need to, so these props come from when I render that component, th that right there, these are the props for it there. And that's them right there. So I could have popped this off like index. Like that better. Let's see if I make sure that works. see okay, there's it there's a changing for people zero to add another person it's changing for person one and you can view the whole state too at that point okay, there's the point where Jason was added Cool, I can go up here and skip. I don't know. No, don't want to do that. Okay. Well, well okay. It's got to be figuring out to do. What did that skip button do? I have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. So I click the plus button, right? So that's in the counter component. Let's go look in the counter view. This is it. It calls this dot props dot increment when I click plus, right? So let's go to the this component. So this component's props come from its container. So it's container increment here. This is where we map the dispatch to props. So this dot props dot increment in that view come from this right here increment. So that's a function that calls dispatch, and it calls our action creator passing the index that came from this component's props. This component's props were rendered here, right? And the action creator is here. It takes the index, and returns that. So when this right here gets passed to the reducer, we've come full circle. The reducer, the reducer renders the new state. Uh, so. It's right up here. This is in my container file, yeah, for this component. So I'm importing in just the actions that I'm going to use in this container, which is increment and decrement. This is all the counter cares about. All the counter cares about is those two actions, and then the props, which, which user am I acting on, right? That's the index there. Yeah, because sometimes your the setup for your store might be a little more complicated. So you may make a file that has all that stuff in it. Yeah, especially if you're going to add like hot module reloading and stuff like that to it. Then the setup for that, there's a couple extra lines of code you've got to add to it. So you'll make like a store.js and then you'll just export the create store function itself. And then you'll just call that app.js. I've seen that before. Cool. When you commit this, you're probably going to want to watch the video again. <laughs> yeah.